When we recommend searching for the last two years of all status data, we tend to get a lot of feedback of people that are really shocked that we're saying two years. You know, we got a lot of the questions of like, are we really using two-year-old data to price against? Like, why are we doing it so far back? And now we address this in many places and many occasions, but this video really just wants to show you, you know, example format that you're not necessarily using two years of data to price, but we need that information in order to do the right kind of algorithmic patterns to get the answers to the pricing and market factors like timing, like momentum and opportunity. So again, this is kind of what we recommend for the most of the search and those two years of all status activity really scare some people. But let me go ahead and jump in the software and just show you that you're not actually using the last two years to price, you're using a much shorter time frame, much more of a, you know, three to six months when it comes to sold properties, but show you also where that two years data is going. So as you can see in the software here, if I just go to my pricing section, I have some data in here already. Now, this was a standard search for the last two years of all status activity. What this lets us see very easily is a last 12 months and then the two years prior. Again, this search is an older search that I wanted to just go ahead and show you um, the same kind of data though, where you can really see it lays out very well for that information. Now you might say, well, why wouldn't we just use the last 12 months then? Because this is what we tend to show people. Well, sometimes it's good to go ahead and show the increasing odds of selling in this case, right? Show the, the momentum of how the neighborhood is changing. But also, we use that last two years and the last 12 months to kind of double check ourselves at times. So for example, let's look at the buying pattern, the most recent one. You can see it's April, May, October, November, December. It's a little bit different than what we would expect to see. If we go to 2018, you can see it's just June and November. So you can see here that, okay, this area and this area are both the highest areas. So the fact that we're pretty much around that same time zone means that yes, the seasonality is standard and, and kind of staying. There are other cases where you'll see the buying pattern be early in the year and the next year it'll be later in the year or the middle of the year. And that can happen a lot of times in a new construction area where a lot of houses are being completed here. And then all of a sudden the resale shifted this direction. So that really gives us a good input when it comes to this, as well as helps us make sure that we're carrying this over correctly when it comes to things like the time to sell, right? 67 days, 65 days, pretty consistent as far as that goes. So we can really see if this is changing. And this and changes in this environment can be a very clear indicator whether the market's moving towards this neighborhood or away from it. So it's good to always have that information. Now we go to pricing though, let's look at this first initial scattergram that's made. You can see here that this goes from uh, November to a March. So that is about five months of data. So if I told you that you're going to look at the last five months of sold information, that might not scare you quite like saying two years. There are cases where this will be nine months, just if there's not enough data. And there's cases where this automatic graph will be three months if there's plenty of sold information. That's done automatically for you with this uh, pre-created graph. It will zoom out or in on time scale just to make sure it's accurate. Now, when it gets to positioning, we're using active information, but we still need the two years of status. And the reason why comes down to this pond. This pond is basically using a time to close graph, a buying pattern and an odds of selling mixed together to create a pattern that we're then able to predict into the future, the next 90 days, what's gonna be sold and what's gonna be coming on the market. The important piece about that is we really need that two years of information to make a long enough progression or numeric progression to have it be accurate. So this here will create an awesome and accurate um, information when it comes to that when you get those two years of information. But again, looking at the positioning scattergram here, we're looking at only homes that are currently under contract or currently for sale. So this is a snapshot of just right now. Obviously we're not positioning as homes that you know were put in the market and either sold or withdrew from two years ago. That's not what we're doing here. This is just the homes that are currently available on the market. But you need that two years of information 
to make sure that the informative graphs like this are accurate. Because we need these to be accurate to really show us where the momentum is, to show what range we're going to position against, and to help us make sure we hone in on this information too.